All right, in this video, I wanted to talk about one more feature of meiosis that creates the genetic diversity or differences that we observe in the gametes that we produce at the end of meiosis. So this factor is called independent assortment, and we'll look at a couple slides to see why this creates genetic diversity in the gametes. This concept will also be important when we consider genetics and why we observe the way, um, the way traits are transmitted to offspring when we talk about genetics later in the course. So we'll keep this in mind continuing on later into the course, but for right now, let's think about how independent assortment creates genetic diversity in the gametes we make during meiosis. So here again is a diagram that illustrates meiosis, where we begin with a cell in interphase, and then we'll do DNA synthesis during S phase. The cell will enter G2, and then we'll leave interphase and go through the steps of meiosis. Prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, then prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two to generate our four uh, haploid gamete cells at the end of meiosis. And again, one of the important features of these four cells that we create at the end of meiosis is that they all uh, are genetically different from one another. So we've talked about crossing over being important for those genetic differences. And today we're considering independent assortment. So independent assortment is a feature of meiosis that occurs during metaphase one. So if we were to highlight this meiosis diagram for when independent assortment is taking place. Again, it's during metaphase one, when our homologous chromosome pairs line up on the metaphase plate. And then during anaphase one, those homologous chromosome pairs will separate with one homologous chromosome heading to each side of the cell. All right. So let's look at what uh, independent assortment looks like. So during each, during independent assortment, each pair of homologous chromosomes align independently. So what do I mean that by that? I mean that when these chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate, the way the first pair of chromosome lines up, chromosomes line up, has no effect on what will happen with the second pair of chromosomes. These events are what we call independent. Another example of an independent event is when we flip a coin. If we flip a coin the first time and we get heads, it doesn't mean we have to get tails the next time we flip a coin. But we could get heads or tails uh, with equally likely probabilities the second time. So how does that relate to independent assortment of these homologous chromosomes? Well, here is a cell with two kinds of chromosomes, the bigger chromosome, and the smaller chromosome. And we have the two homologs of each chromosome here, a blue homolog and a red homolog. Each homolog is com uh, composed of its two sister chromatids. So the blue chromosome, the blue large chromosome has two sister chromatids in it. And the red large chromosome has two sister chromatids in it. All right, so at metaphase of meiosis one, these chromosomes align on the metaphase plate. And so if we just look at what's going on with the large chromosome, the blue homolog is on the left and the red homolog is on the right. Now we'll align the second chromosome on the metaphase plate as well. In this case, again, these chromosomes don't affect one another. In this case, the small blue homo homolog also lined up on the left and the red small homolog also lined up on the right, where both blue chromosomes are on the left and both red chromosomes are on the right. But again, that does not have to be the case. These, events, these events are independent. So a second way that we could get these chromosomes to line up is like this on the right over here, where the blue large chromosome is still on the left, the red large chromosome oops, is still on the right, but below them, the small chromosomes have switched their orientation. And now the red chromosome is on the left and 
the blue chromosome is on the right. So that is independent assortment. The way these homologous chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate during metaphase one of meiosis is completely independent of one another. So that means if we have two chromosomes like this, there are four different kinds of gametes that we can develop uh, to generate via meiosis. So if we think about just possibility one, in meiosis one, we're going to sepa separate the homologous chromosomes. So both the blue chromosomes will be in one daughter cell, and both the red chromosomes will be in the other daughter cell. And then in meiosis two, we're going to separate these sister chromatids. When we do that, we will generate our four gametes, one gamete with two blue chromosomes, another gamete with two blue chromosomes, and then two more gametes, both of which containing just the red chromosomes. But if the homologous chromosomes had lined up differently during metaphase one, then we'd get different results. We'd separate the homologous chromosomes into these two daughter cells, and then we'd separate the sister chromatids into the four gametes at the end of meiosis one. Now we have gametes where there's one bl large blue chromosome and one small red, or one large red chromosome and one small blue chromosome. So we've created four different possibilities for the combinations of these chromosomes. And that's going to happen, that independent assortment is happening again for every single chromosome in the cell. So let's think through the consequences of being able to align every chromosome independently. Right? Again, this is going to contribute to the genetic differences we see in gametes. So for the example we just looked at, in a cell with just two kinds of chromosomes, there was the large chromosome and the smaller chromosome, there are two raised to the second power ways that we can align those two chromosomes. So we get two times two, there's four ways. We just observe those four ways we can assort those chromosomes into the gamete cells. But what if we added one more chromosome? So what if a cell had three kinds of chromosomes? Well, then there would be two to the third power ways that we could assort those chromosomes into the gametes. There would be eight different combinations we could make. So this is going to grow exponentially. We're going to get to big numbers really fast. But let's consider what happens for human cells. Human cells contain 23 different kinds of chromosomes. So in order to figure out the number of different ways we can sort each of those 23 chromosomes into a gamete, we go 2 to the 23rd power. So human cells have 23 kinds of chromosomes. There are two to the 23rd power ways that we can sort out those chromosomes. That's almost eight and a half million ways that we can create gametes just by aligning those chromosomes independently. So it's this factor that, that means that we create so many different kinds of gametes, genetically different gametes during meiosis. And this alone would be enough to explain why we don't observe identical twin siblings from parents. Right? Just based on independent assortment, there's almost a 1 in 8.5 million chance that any two children from a set of parents would be identical because you would only put the same chromosomes into the gamete one every 8.5 million times. But this isn't the only reason that the gametes are different. Remember, we also have crossing over, which makes two of the chromatids different from one another as well. And that contributes to the genetic differences. And that's why um, when we combine crossing over and independent assortment, that we say meiosis never generates two identical gametes in terms of their genetic content. They are always different. So we'll keep that in mind moving forward. Again, we'll use this idea of independent assortment moving uh, when we talk about genetics later on in the semester. And as always, I hope you ask questions if you have them, and I will talk to you again soon.